Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is December 13th, 2020, and this is episode 154. Today we're going to take a look at Vampire, The Masquerade, number 5, Winter's Teeth, and this is published by Vault. It's a $3.99, and you take a quick look at the cover. I'm sure there was a variant cover in this one. You really can't tell too much what's going out. It's... Uh, it's some kind of uh, ancient vampire, let's say, to, so to speak, that lurks in the sewers below the city of Minneapolis. So we get a good look at that. I um, just want to say this story has been pretty good. It's pretty intense. It's very intricate. And it's actually two stories in here. We have The Masquerade, or, or excuse me, Winter's Teeth, and the other one is The Anarch Tales. And what uh, I've been kind of prophesizing over the last five issues or four issues before this, I felt the two stories could come together. And in this issue, they do. They actually meet up um, sort of at the end of the of the Winter's Teeth. It kind of starts in with the beginning of the Anarch Tales, or at least one character from the Anarch Tales has made the transition into the uh, Winter's Teeth. So... I'm not going to go through the whole story because it has gotten really, really um, complicated, so to speak. A lot has happened. There's a lot of uh, intrigue, double-crossing, triple-cross, uh, alliances being made, alliances being broken. Uh, so it's gotten pretty involved. Uh, the writer on this is Tim Seeley, uh, Devin Mal Malalia Prom <laughs> Promenick. Uh, is the artist, and that's for the Winter's Teeth. On the Anarch Tales, we have Teeny Howard and Blake Howard doing the writing, and it's drawn by Nathan Gooden. Uh, the colorists on on this uh, is Addison Duke, and he did the as you, he blended the the two tales together, so it's almost seamless when they go into one the other. The uh, artwork is a little bit different, not too much. And the writing is pretty strong in full. So, just off the top, I'll show you some art in here. Because, like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole story. It's, it's, we're the fifth issue in. It's gotten very complex. There's a lot of good action here. You see some gross things. The vampires are really going after each other. All the different clans, all the different sects, all the different types. Um, it's been a pretty exciting run, for me at least. So far, I'm not really big into vampires, but I have been enjoying this storyline. And uh, it just continued on. Uh, what, there was a surprise. Well, not really a surprise. They kind of hinted at it the first issue. And it, they kind of reveal it in this issue that Allie, who is with Cecilia, Cecilia who's kind of like the, uh, the enforcer of the vampires. She's not really... Um, an official member of any sect, but she's kind of works with one sect to go out and pretty much assassinate or just keep people in line, whatever they need her to do. And uh, now she is the target. She has, uh, the hunters are all out after her. All the vampires are all trying to strike her down. Um, and it's not till the end where we've got like two characters, Calder, who's a, I've heard that he's like a blood wizard and uh, Aaron, who's uh, an Alquincon, Al Al Alquan, I can't think of how it's an Indian tribe, Al Alquan, <laughs> something like that. She is, um, they're like kind of rivals, but kind of, they don't know it. Uh, or she, she, Aaron hasn't made it known, but now uh, Cecilia has told Calder that, yeah, she's, she's eyeing for you. She's out to get you. But this could be a ploy on Cecilia to get her, get uh, Calder and all the other vampires off her back as they're always struggling to come after her. So um, it's been a good story. And like I said, it when it does end, when the Winter's Teeth episode does end, we go right into a setup for the Anarch Tales. And Cecilia Bain starts right off there. She's in it. Uh, it's the first time that we have seen her in it. She's been mentioned in the tales before. So um, the Rat King comes and visits her. And you can see the Rat King somewhere here. 
maybe not yet. Um, they've ditched their van. This is the group of Anarch that were heading from Duluth to Minnesota or to Minneapolis. And they kind of have a few flashbacks here with uh, Colleen, who's she's the her her vampire power, her special power is she's able to walk in the sunlight. It just gives her a little bit of a headache. So she can be up at all times, doesn't have to worry about being destroyed by sun. So the Rat King comes and visits uh, Cecilia, and they just discuss some more things. A new uh, kind of a vampire preacher is brought into the fold, into the storyline here. So it, it's just gotten more and more building up on this side of it. So you know there's some kind of, there's been um, talk of a vampire civil war between the two, the Twin Cities. And I think it's going to lead up to something like that coming up in the future. Now, Tim Seeley uh, kind of made a, he kind of quotes uh, Jerry Dugan in here, um, the other comic book artist, writer. I guess he's a, a comic book writer. He drops a little Easter egg in there, um, which I didn't think was too smart because it's kind of he's showing his hands on how he feels about things. And maybe that's just to show his political stance. Um, he also makes a comment about uh, how a certain political group in Germany in World War II is very much like a current political group in, in America. It's not the group in America that has the Clintons or Hunter Biden or Nancy Pelosi or Gavin Newsom, but you know which one I'm talking about. So. Um, he kind of drops that little hint in there, um, comparing them to the, the uh, political group from World War II in Germany. But, um, of course, uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but showing off his politics, and I, he did need to do that. But that aside, story is good. It is still a recommend. Uh, I am enjoying it. And we can take a quick look at the back. They give you a little synopsis sort of a little synopsis of what has happened in through issue four and less about what happens in this issue. So if you want to pause it, you can kind of read it and get caught up a little bit. But I would advise if you are at all interested in this to wait for the paperback if you cannot get all the issues. Okay, so thank you for stopping by. This is Indie Comics Jones from the Temple of Tomes. Please like Please subscribe if you haven't already. I think I got new three new describe, subscribers this week. And uh, leave me a comment. You know, I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I'll be, there will be more reviews coming. And I bid you adieu from the Temple of Tomes.